Okay, parallel circuits. How do we work these out? Well, let's take the simple circuit here, which is one resistor, one voltage, 10 ohms. Well, if I was to get a voltmeter and put it there, I would measure 50 volts. If I put the voltmeter there, I'll also measure 50 volts. So, therefore, that will just make the current flow is Ohm's law, PV over R. In this case, it'd be Vs over R1. So it's a simple mass. I'm sure you all guessed. We know we would get 5 amps flow around in this circuit. However, what happens if we add another resistor to the circuit, but this time in parallel? So we add it there. Now, if we add another resistor, let's call this one. R2, let's also make this one 10 ohms. If we look at the voltage, if we measure put a voltmeter there, you would measure 50 volts. Put a voltmeter there, it will also be 50 volts. Put a voltmeter there, you're right, it will also be another 50 volts. So therefore the voltage in a parallel circuit stays the same. But this time, the current when it gets to this point, it can go somewhere else as well. So current can flow here. Current will all flow, also flow in that location. Well, here we know it's going to be 5 amps in this part. Originally it was 5 there, but we've added another one. So actually, let's call this one I1, and let's call this one I2. So this one was originally I1. So to calculate I2, it is... Vs, because the voltage stays the same, divided by R2. So keeping the numbers the same, 50 divided by 10 equals 5 amps. So therefore we've got 5 amps flow through this part of the circuit as well. Which means if 5 amps flow through here, 5 amps flow through here, this bit here must be IT. And this was a guy called Kirchhoff who came up with this one. Because he said what flows in must flows out. It wasn't quite that, but it was all do for the time being. It's I1 plus I2. Therefore, 5 plus 5 must be 10. So there must be 10 amps flowing in the circuit. Which means as you put more resistors in a parallel circuit, the actual overall resistance must go down for current to go up. So therefore the formula for working out resistance total in a parallel circuit is this. Now for series it was RT equals R1 plus R2. It's very simple to turn this into a parallel circuit because all we do is turn it into fractions. So it becomes 1 over RT is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. And this can be done by fractions, but your calculator can do it a lot easier. However, I've made the numbers, numbers simple for this occasion. So the button we can learn on our calculator is this button here, the X to the minus 1 button. If you have an older calculator, the button you may well have will be 1 over x. These buttons are exactly the same. Whatever they do, whatever number is in here, it will divide it into 1, which is what this is doing. So if we put that into your calculator, and this is the important part, is getting this bit correct. It is 10 x to the minus 1 plus 10 x to the minus 1 equals. Now, you must do x to the minus 1 again, because your answer is x to the minus 1 equals, and we come out at 5. So therefore RT is 5. What you may have noticed, and hopefully you realise, that actually when you have all the resistors the same, and they're all the same value, you just take one of them and divide by the number of them. So 10 divided by 2 of the same. 10 divided by 2 gives you 5 is a quicker way to get there in this case.
Okay, so how can we work out the total resistance of these three resistors? 1, 2, 3, 10, 15, 30. Let's work out RT for the total. So RT is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. Remember, that's a series. It's turning into parallel. Simple as that. So let's rule it out so it's the same. Remember the number, the button we can use on the calculator is 1 over x, this button here. So if we put those figures in, it becomes 10. x to the minus 1 plus 15, x to the minus 1 plus 30, x to the minus 1 equals, and then x to the minus 1 your answer as well, and then equals the end. And we get 5. So RT for this circuit is 5 ohms. Okay, which means we can now start looking at currents. Well, looking at this parallel circuit, all the current must flow at this point here. So the total must be at this location. When it gets to this point here, some will split off and we'll go through R1. The rest will continue. So you'll get a current flow through this point here. When it gets to that point again, some will split off, and the remainder will go through that last resistor. Another flow through that last bit will come back down this way, and it will then join up with this current, so in this location. So actually the current there and there will be the same. When they get to this point, they will join up again, and whatever flows here will also flow in that location. In order to work currents out, we need to know the voltage. So we'll put 50 volts on. Now remember, voltage in a parallel circuit stays the same throughout. So whatever you read there is 50 volts, but a voltmeter there will also read 50, 50, 50, a bit there and there, there and there, there and there, there and there, always 50. So the voltage in a parallel circuit is always constant. If we apply that now then, we can work out IT, which will be Vs divided by, because it's a total, it's got to be RT. So 50 divided by 5, 10 amps. So here will be 10 amps. But it also means that this location here will also be 10 amps. Now we can calculate the other three currents. I1 is equal to Vs divided by, not RT this time, it's the voltage across the resistor divided by the value of that resistor. So R1. So it becomes 50 divided by so therefore, 5 amps flows through that one. We can now work out I2 is Vs, because the voltage stays the same, divided by that resistor. So it becomes 50 divided by 15. We can now work out these two here. So 50 divided by 15 is 3.3 recurring amps. I3 will continue on the same vein. So Vs, because voltage is constant, divided by R3, which is 30. So it's 50 divided by 30. If we do that calculation, it comes to 1.7 approximately amps. Okay. Okay, what we can now get then is Kirchhoff's current law. Is IT is equal to I1 
by two plus by three. All these currents, when added up, you come to that as a check. What it allows us to do then is we can actually work out what these currents here will be. So we'll call this one I4. So I4 is made up. Well, it starts off with 10, and then we lose I1. So we can actually calculate I4 by doing I2 take away I1. So we've got this figured in. So therefore we must have 5 amps flowing in this location here. Seems simple for someone to come up with it. Had a name, Kirchhoff's current law. And it's a bit more complex.